Hi, this is Dr. Milo McManus. What I'm about to tell you, we've posted on before. I've done online summit interviews about this. We've done newsletter articles about this. It's worth saying again. So of all of the thousands of symptoms and diseases that are out there that people suffer with, the root causes boil down to about 10 things. So I recently posted about addressing gut health to address disease. That's one root cause. Another one are food allergies and food sensitivities, which are related to having a compromised gut. So food allergies, people have heard of this. You put a peanut in your mouth, your lip swells up, you eat a strawberry, you're in the hospital with anaphylaxis. It happens. That you can connect those dots, right? So food sensitivities, however, they're pretty much ignored in conventional medicine. Whereas in functional medicine, they're one of our staple tests. It is so helpful. It gives us so much insight. It's so helpful for patients to see this on paper. And by the way, you don't even have to be a patient here to do the testing. You're welcome to schedule the testing. It's a blood draw. Food sensitivities are not true food allergies. They are not going to trigger anaphylactic shock. In addition, <laughs> these are delayed reactions. They're not these immediate reactions like you see with food allergies. So when you have a food sensitivity, you're reacting to something you ate two to three days ago. It's virtually impossible to connect those dots. And food sensitivities can trigger so many different health issues. And I've seen it all over the years. So I like to tell people, you know, food sensitivities can trigger anything from a skin rash to schizophrenia. I've seen them trigger heart problems, palpitations, things like that. I've seen them trigger bladder irritation, all kinds of gastrointestinal issues, skin issues, rashes, um, brain issues, brain fog, mood changes, um, what else? Joint pain, muscle pain. I've seen food sensitivities flare up autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis. Um, gosh, I mean, the list goes on. So do not discount the impact of food and what you're putting in your mouth. And if you're wondering why you're having random symptoms and you think it's one thing, it might be something totally different. Now, the usual suspects when it comes to food sensitivities gluten, wheat products, basically in general, corn is common, almonds. I'm seeing a lot of almonds in the last several years. And I think it's now because everybody's avoiding gluten and dairy. So they're drinking almond milk and they're eating almond based crackers and other things that are gluten free. I see a lot of dairy, um, you know, all kinds of cheese. And sometimes you'll see that somebody's highly sensitive to all the cow's milk, but they, but not goat's milk. So maybe they can have occasional goat cheese. Um, I rarely ever see broccoli food sensitivities. That's because people don't usually have that as a staple in their diet, <laughs> but let's see, what else have I seen? Um, I've seen a lot of citrus be an issue. Um, legumes, so beans, soy, those are pretty common. Sometimes oats, those are pretty common. So if you just want to test, take a few things out of your diet and just see if whatever you're suffering with improves, do that. Cut out wheat products and dairy and sugar. Oh, eggs. We love eggs. Eggs are healthy for you. But eggs are an extremely common food allergy and food sensitivity. So just give all that stuff up for a week or two and see if you start to notice things improving. Be well.